Welcome back to Chipstock Investor. Today, we're going to center our discussion on some news about Huawei applying for a patent application in China for EUV scanners. Nick, can you tell us a little bit about what this news is? Yes. So Huawei, of course, is the Chinese tech giant. They make everything from smartphones to various infrastructure equipment uh, to chips. Apparently, Huawei has applied for a patent in China for EUV or extreme ultraviolet lithography equipment. And EUV machines are what make smaller than seven nanometer chips. So basically the most advanced chips that go into smartphones, data center equipment that help with high performance computing and AI and that type of thing. So the thought here is that Huawei wants to make these chips themselves, or maybe they want to sell the EUV equipment to other chip companies in China, which is important because as we all know, uh, the U.S. put certain restrictions on sales to China to help to try to slow down the development of their semiconductor industry. Okay, got it. So my understanding is that ASML is the only company currently that makes these EUV machines. That is correct. ASML is the only company that makes these machines. There's just a few chip manufacturers that are actually even using these machines, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. Samsung, SK Hynix, TSMC, Intel, and Micron. Right, right. And of course, Taiwan Semiconductor, TSMC, big announcement that they're bringing mm -hmm. some of that chip production to the United States. Can you explain a little bit about how complex these machines actually are? Okay, so to say extreme ultraviolet chip manufacturing equipment is complex is a bit of an understatement, right? Uh, so <laughs> in doing the prep for this, you, you found an article that explained there are hundreds of thousands of indi individual parts that make these different modules, dozens of modules, very complex, smaller pieces of equipment that all go into making a whole EUV lithography mm -hmm. machine. So in addition to just building the machine, there's also the complexity of then transporting it. And then once it's installed in a chip fab, ASML actually has like an employee that has to be there helping operate the EUV lithography equipment in the chip fab company's fab. So it's not just selling like um, a power tool uh, and then saying, you know, here you go. Right. Best of luck. Uh, follow this manual and, and you'll be good. Yeah. It's a little different than getting like an Ikea box, right? Like an <laughs> Ikea instructions, it's a little more complex than that. Just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I was reading about the size of these machines. It said it's, it's the size of a small school bus. Is mm -hmm. that right? Mm -hmm. And Intel had a really great video of the machines installed in the D1X facility in Oregon, which we'll link in the description so you can take a look at it. But it mentions that it took three Boeing 747 cargo planes, mm -hmm. 40 freight containers, and 20 trucks to just deliver the machine wow. to that facility. It weighs nearly 200 tons. Yeah, that's, that's mind boggling. So, um, I mean, an Ikea box is pretty daunting, but this is <laughs> this is like thousands of Ikea boxes showing up on your doorstep all at once. Yeah. So a little history on the EUV machine. These machines were decades in the making. Mm -hmm. Research started on it, on the technology in the 1980s. And then in 1994, the, they created the first prototype. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's tests and demos that went on for many years. And then in 2010, the first twin scan 3100 was shipped. Wow. Yeah. And so at the beginning of 2020, actually, was when they shipped their 100th unit. Okay. So there's not even that many of them in existence in the first place. No, exactly. Hmm. So you can see that this company has been developing this technology for over 30 years. They mm -hmm. really know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Currently, even under the ban with China, ASML has been able to continue to ship DUV or deep ultraviolet machines to Huawei and other Chinese chip manufacturers. Is that correct? Mm -hmm, that's correct. Okay. So can you explain the difference between a DUV and an EUV machine? Okay. Yes. So maybe we should actually back up for just a second and maybe first define what lithography equipment is in the first place, specifically photolithography. Okay. So lithography is when a silicone wafer, those are the big round disks that you sometimes see people in a white bunny suit holding in, in a uh, chip fab. 
when they are coated with a material sensitive to light uh, called a resist. And then a light is shined on the wafer. Over the light, there's a reticle or a template of different lines that basically put a pattern onto the surface of the silicone wafer. And so the parts of, of the light, the lines that shine through the reticle and hit the wafer, uh, the resist reacts with that, and then the rest does not. And so then the next step after the lithography step is called etch. It's where the, uh, the resist material is removed and it kind of reveals all these lines and channels that have been kind of drawn, I guess you could say, on the actual disc. Um, and etch is where like a company like Applied Materials or LAM Research would come in on the next step. But that's the lithography step has to come first and that's where ASML comes in. Um, so as to your question as to the light itself, deep ultraviolet versus extreme ultraviolet, ultraviolet, DUV and EUV. So if you remember back to your physics class, <laughs> recall that light travels in waves. And then the distance between the peaks in those waves determines the color of the light that we can observe with our eyes, the visible spectrum. So on that same spectrum are things like infrared and radar. That's to the right of red okay. of what we can see, you know, mm -hmm. to the right of red, we can't, we can't see, but that's where things like radar uh, mm -hmm. reside. And then to the left of blue and purple are things like ultraviolet light. Again, we can't see ultraviolet, but it's there. It's a short wavelength okay. that's to the left of blue and purple. So the chip industry has, as it's developed over the decades, has found out that by using ultraviolet light on the left side of the spectrum, those really, really short wavelengths in, in the light allow them to continuously miniaturize those patterns on the silicone wafer. So the further okay. left, basically, they go into ultraviolet, they can get smaller and smaller patterns on the surface mm -hmm. of the wafer, which is what creates these incredibly powerful chips. And so DUV is the longer wavelengths. EUV is a very special technology requiring special lasers, a whole module of mirrors that shrink that that wavelength down even more, down to like 30 nanometers and, and less so that we can get those most advanced chips. And so that's where the patent that ASML has comes in on that extreme ultraviolet light, special lasers, special mirrors, and a whole bunch of other modules mm -hmm. that make this incredibly complex process possible in the first place. It's really cool, really complex stuff. Mm -hmm. So up until this point, Huawei has had DUV capability which has kind of limited their chip design, correct? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. They can only go so far with DUV. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So with China having a extreme ultraviolet lithography machine, does that make ASML a little bit nervous? This is where things get a little bit interesting. And I'm going to say probably not. Okay. Because filing a patent on a piece of technology is not the same thing as actually building the machine. Mm -hmm. um, and then making sure the machine works properly. And then you have to find people who are willing to use the machine. Um, and Huawei hasn't done this yet. So they're behind the curve already. ASML mm -hmm. has already been doing this, like you mentioned for decades. Yeah. Why would someone choose a Huawei machine? And then there's also the consideration too that, um, sure, maybe Huawei's EUV machine works and it can sell it to a lot of upstart Chinese chip manufacturers. Mm -hmm. ASML doesn't have to worry about that because currently they're not selling, they're not allowed to sell the EUV equip equipment to China, only DUV. Right. And ASML is not the only DUV equipment maker in the first mm -hmm. place. They already have competition on that front. So. Uh, this is, this is in my opinion, as far as I can tell, I don't see this as being an imminent threat. Okay. Yeah. And I, I was reading that ASML is also kind of future proofing here. They, they're, uh, developing a next generation high in a EUV mm -hmm. platform that's called, uh, EXE, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. 
And so this technology increases that numerical aperture mm -hmm. that you were speaking about from 0 0.33 to 0 0.55. Mm -hmm. And that system is expected to start delivery in 2023 and then be operational by 2025. Right, right. And there's other EUV technology they're also working on that actually continuously shrinks uh, the light wavelength even mm -hmm. more. So currently, like the leaders in using the actual EUV equipment would be Taiwan Semiconductor and Samsung. Okay. Um, they're actually both currently working on their three nanometer technology, uh, working on two nanometer technology, but ASML's next batch of equipment will actually be able to shrink uh, these sizes down below one nanometer, um, which at this point we're getting into measurements called angstroms. Um, there's 10 angstroms in a nanometer. So, I mean, we're talking subatomic level here, not just microscopic, but subatomic level uh, shapes, lines and shapes that these these companies are able to draw onto these silicon wafers. So, okay. yeah, Huawei has a long ways to go to play catch up. Okay. I think the last time I heard about subatomic was in Ant-Man. So, so what does this all mean for stocks like ASML and Applied Materials, who supplied some of these components to ASML? Right. Uh, good question. I mean, I think we probably need to wait and see, but this is a patent in China. As I mentioned earlier, let's say the patent is good. They're able to make the equipment. It works properly. Huawei will probably be able to sell this equipment to other chip makers mm -hmm. in China, within China, okay. that have been cut off from EUV. Uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean um, a semiconductor manufacturer like an Intel or a Micron or a Taiwan Semi would want to purchase one of these pieces of, of equipment from Huawei when they already have the trusted partner, ASML, that they've been working, for, working with for decades already. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. There is one risk, though, that I think actually exists outside of Huawei's patent application in China, and that's that there are some technologies being developed that are an alternative to EUV uh, or maybe a way to like circumvent mm -hmm. EUV when developing these super, super tiny patterns. But that's probably a completely dis different discussion for a different time. Uh, I think EUV, specifically ASML's EUV equipment, is safe for the foreseeable future. Thank you so much for listening to our discussion today about Huawei's new patent application in China for the EUV lithography machine. I hope you understand it a little bit better. I think I do. So please uh, subscribe to our channel to get some more information and education regarding things like this. Also, feel free to comment. Uh, in the comments below, we'll try to reply and hit you up with more information as you need it. We'll have more information on this topic and a lot of other semiconductor topics here as we kick off 2023.